Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special episode of Esoteric Atlanta with my friend Stephanie Schapp from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening. And this is the second time we filmed together today, guys. If you see us in a video with Emmy in these same outfits, we literally just finished filming with her about an hour ago, but we're releasing this at a very specific time um, because we can say astrologically. Uh, when we feel like it's appropriate to release this, which is two o'clock in the morning on Thursday, the 28th, is Thursday, the 28th. Yeah. Yeah. So right. this is a, this is going to be a very interesting, interesting, interesting. Now, wait a second. So, Hold on. Bryce is today Tuesday, right? Today is Tuesday. Yeah, you're right. The 28th. <laughs> it's been a long day it's so we're long day, yeah. Tuesday, but this is being released on thursday i did zublik show for two hours and filmed with you and emmy and now we're filming again and um, i'm recording all of my elements yes, today. So, so it's been a very long day <laughs> but we're going with it because we feel like this is really important and we're going to be also on thursday going to be back on zublik show i'll be with stephanie to also talk about this but before we get started into the subject at hand, once again, please make sure to go and subscribe to Stephanie at Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening. If you have not already, um, as she said today, she's filming the elements, and that's my favorite of her channelings are the, are the elements. But of course, I've been following astrology for a very, very, very long time. Now, before we get into the subject at hand, um, how this started on Monday of this week, I was on Aquarius Rising Africa as I go on their shows on Monday. And we were talking about the Codex Gingas. It's this episode right here, which I will put in the description box below. I'm not going to go into too, too much detail about the Codex Gingas on this episode because I don't want to beat a dead horse. So if you want more details, please go back and watch that episode. But the Codex Gingas, my research into the Codex Gingas, which translates into giant book, um, brought me to another book in my research. Again, the Codex Gingas has some very, very interesting things to it. Um, definitely a paranormal book. Uh, the Old and New Testament are in it with some other stuff. And there are 10 to 12 pages that are missing from the Codex Gingas. Like I said, if you have not seen that episode on Aquarius Rising Africa and you're interested in that and how this feeds into the next book, then I would suggest hopping over and watching that. Again, I will link that down below. So before we get into the Necronomicon, which is the book I discovered when I was um, when I was preparing for uh, the Codex Gingas for Aquarius Rising Africa, there's a few things I wanted to ask you, Stephanie, because we, I want to talk a little bit about language and vibration. And we've already, Stephanie and I, and I have already pre-talked about this and looked into this together um, to figure out how we were going to present it to you guys, because I feel like it's really important that we understand what the Necronomicon is, or we think it is. Um, so let's talk about language. As we were looking into this first, you had some light language come through. And so I'm going to first ask you just to do the light language three times, just to protect us. You wrote it down. Taba it again? Usa Aliga. Taba Usa Aliga. Taba Usa Aliga. Taba Usa Aliga. Taba Usa Aliga. All right, cool. Thank you. That's a light language, guys. Speaking of light language, something I want to verify. Um, can we ask the cards? We know that our, we were taught that some of the original languages in our modern world um, are Latin and Sanskrit. Can we ask the cards um, who gave us the, the Latin language? If it's demonic or if it's good. Sometimes these cards just don't lie. All right. Not, it's not of the light. Okay. Um, so I asked, I asked God source, is Latin a bad language? And if I can get a hint on who it's created by, <coughs> Um, it is a demonic language. That's an ace of pentacles. So that answers my question. Um, however, it's coming from those who um, are thieves and create harm. So it's nefarious. And they made it very, very tricky for you to understand it. So that, so like the powers that be, you know, um, 
they don't want you to understand it so that because they I feel like they embedded it. Um, they like put it. They use it for spell. They put classes, it in a lot of our languages. Yeah, like English is uh, English, French, German is all offshoots of Latin. Um, but it, it's basically Latin itself is spell casting, isn't it? For for the dark forces. Mm -hmm. That's why the, that's why the church uses it. It's, it's going to come out though as a just spell casting for Satan, basically. I mean, the church is satanic. Yeah. Period. I'll I'll make it. I'm going to just like give you guys, uh, give the viewers kind of an understanding of how our language is completely manipulated. The word understand. We understand, like understand. No, no, no. We understand. Mm -hmm. That's, That's manipulation. Yeah. Yeah. And if when you go to the courthouse for like divorce or for um, custody agreement and, and all that kind of stuff, it's all in Latin. And they make it that way so you don't understand your head from your ass with yeah. what you're doing. And it's spell casting. Um, it's all spell. It's all fucking spell casting. That's what it is. And that's why the Bible. They took all the languages and created it into Latin, and they changed the story. The Bible is not. Uh, what's that? I can't see. Magician. Yeah, I mean they've changed everything. Um, even Yahshua, Jesus' story. He wasn't crucified. That's a human sacrifice. That's a. That's what they do. That's that's Mithra what they was. Do. Mithra, Mithra was. was. Yeah. Yahshua was not. Cause that's a loving God wouldn't do that because a loving God would never cast his children into hell anyway. So, all right. So let me ask you about Sanskrit then. Is Sanskrit a white language? Yep. Strength card. And it comes from another world. Um, but what they did is uh, the powers that be put it in a hangman state and actually um, would persecute against this. Um, and then it actually, there might be, and I'm not saying it is, but there, I think they at one point probably tried to manipulate it with that seven of cups. I feel like going forward though, we're actually going to be using it a lot more. And, um, yeah, I mean with that strength card, absolutely. Cause I mean, yeah, Sanskrit's a holy language. I speak Sanskrit and it, well, okay. So is that why it was easy for me to learn Sanskrit? I learned it as an adult, which usually learning, learning second languages as an adult is difficult, very difficult, but I learned it very easily, came very naturally to me. Um, yep. Langa, yes. It actually is a past life language for you. So you were just relearning it. You already knew it. It actually helped you walk away from a lot of your old stuff, your old junk, and maybe your your childhood life. And um, I think your soul was wishing and hoping you were going to learn it again. That's something you wish for. Well, I mean, I learned it in India, so um, so put um, you on a new journey. Well, and I will say, uh, we know with Ayurveda, vibration is part of that, and that's that comes with like chanting, and and I do I have a lot of. Sanskrit prayers that will actually make you sweat and like you part of that karmic cleansing. Um, so I wanted to, the reason why I asked that question, Sanskrit's not going to be a part of the Necronomicon, but I brought it up because the Codex Gingas again is written in Latin. A lot of these nefarious books are written in Latin. And of course um, I've had people tell me I'm demonic because I speak Sanskrit, but actually it's flipped. It's the opposite. And I know the story of how Sanskrit came to be. It was brought to the earth by um, one of the deities, which is a beautiful story about how they brought the language to, which I think it's a light language. One of the light, like the Tabu Usa Aliga is one of the, the light languages of the heavens. Um, whereas Latin is very, you got the earth-based pentacle. It's very demonic. It's very um, spell casting for Satan. Okay. So speaking of old Lucifer, let's talk about the Necronomicon. So some of you may have heard of this book. I, I am a huge fan of literature. I'm a big time reader. There's no joy greater to me than reading. I'm obviously a dork. I love to study weird stories, but in my 39 years on this earth, I have never heard of the Necronomicon and it popped up. Now I had studied the Codex, or presented the Codex Gingas on my channel a year and a half ago. And then I went to go present it on Aquarius Rising Africa and I was brushing up on some stuff and I s discovered this book and I called you right after I discovered it. And we zoomed. I, I look like I 
was a headlight, a deer in headlights, didn't you I? You look like you saw a ghost. You're like, I'm, I'm shaking right now. I'm shaking. And like, so I started to pull some cards on it to kind of get a grasp of what it was. And I could feel my energy just siphoning away from me. Yeah. So <laughs> I was actually going to, um, when I first discovered it, I found on YouTube an audio book of the Necronomicon. And I was going to listen to it. So I knew the whole thing so I could present it. Cause I knew instantly that I needed to talk about them. I, I knew instantly that, that the reason why this book showed up in my research all of a sudden when it hadn't before was because it needed to be talked about openly. And, but we got for me not to actually listen to the devil. Yeah. So we're going to talk about it. I've researched into it. I've listened to other there. You guys can go on YouTube and find a lot of people's experiences with the Necronomicon. Now I understand why God said, don't listen to it. It's a spell book. It's the dirtiest of all spell books, but the powers that be will tell you it's completely fiction. It's not completely fiction. So let's talk about just a brief, a brief um, intro into where, how this book came into our being. I'm sure there's some, twisted parts of the story it was first uh brought about by hp lovecraft who was an american uh writer kind of along the lines of edgar Allan poe although i would say that edgar Allan poe is a kitty cat compared to lovecraft's life all right he looks creepy We'll listen to his story and we'll, well, I, I, you know, I don't know if we should pull on his family because it's consent and all that kind of stuff, but I don't really think we need to. I think we can hear about his family and you guys are going to get exactly what happened to this guy. He was born on the 20th of August, 1890. He died on the 15th of March, 1937. When he was three years old, his father was institutionalized for going crazy. Um, he is labeled as the Titan of Terror. And he allegedly was the person who inspired such writers as Stephen King. Um, the theme of his work is ordinary family, families hiding dark secrets. He was born into one of the oldest families in Providence, Rhode Island, a pedigree, basically. That's like less than an hour from me. Holy yeah. shit. And after his father was institutionalized, his mom and, and H.P. Lovecraft, the son, went to live with their her father, a very, very wealthy grandfather, whose name was Whipple, Von Buren Phillips Whipple. I love that name. Um, by six years old, Lovecraft started suffering from night terrors. Now, I used to get night terrors. I still sometimes get a little, I, I walk in my sleep a lot. Um, but at six, he was getting these night terrors. Now, this is important to remember because when we, when we get to the Necronomicon, all right. He didn't go to a traditional school. He was homeschooled because I don't have a lot of social anxieties. He was a very strange kid. Um, in my opinion, that shows signs of abuse um, and dissociating. And uh, his story is, I mean, I actually feel kind of bad for him. Um, in 1904, when H.P. Lovecraft was 14 years old, his grandfather passed away. And basically the grandfather had mismanaged their family's wealth. And so he, they were evicted from their house and they were left penniless. By 1908, at 18, Lovecraft went a little cuckoo himself and he locked himself away with his mother. His mother and him allegedly had a very strange relationship. We know that with a lot of these, we'll say pedigree families, there is that type of strange relationship. He started to write for the United Amateur Press Associated Association. And there was another writer at that time named named fred jackson who would write these like romance stories in these magazines and lovecraft i heard one person say that basically lovecraft would troll him he would send these like awfully critical the editorials into the magazine and that's what kind of got him his start as a writer uh he ended up meeting a woman named Sonia Haft Green, who was seven years older than him. They got married. She was independently wealthy as she was a Russian Jew, which is important because you see a lot of racism in his writing, which is interesting that he married a woman who was Jewish. Uh, in 1924, he got married and moved to New York. But in 1926, he ended up going back to Rhode Island when she went to Chicago to try to find a job because they lost all her money. And he never saw her again. At this point, he went to writing some of his most famous works. Oh, something I forgot to mention. In 1919, his mother was also institutionalized for being 
something being wrong with her mind. Okay. So um, at this point, he was living with two of his elderly aunts. And this is when he wrote some of his most famous works, which um, you guys can look up a list of all those. I mean, some of them are right here of his works. Um, he died in 1937 of cancer, but after death, a man named August Derelith, who was one of his prodigies, who was very wealthy himself, actually opened up a, a printing publishing house, and that's when his book started to get published. In 1970s, many horror movies took from Lovecraft's work, including Ghostbusters, Batman, and Friday the 13th. Now, throughout Lovecraft's work, he writes these stories and he would mention in these very scary stories, the Necronomicon. He would just mention them in these stories revolving around these characters. The Necronomicon was considered to be the most dangerous book. And this is where people get confused and will be like, oh, it's just fiction. No, no. Let me tell you a little bit about the Necronomicon. Now, Necronomicon means an image of the law of the dead. Okay, so the law of the dead. What have we been living under for all these years? The law of the dead, maritime law. Not the law of the land, the law of the sea, which is Necronomicon. What do these people worship? the God of death, not the God of light. The Necronomicon, it apparently contains the power to resurrect the dead. So I get a little nauseated talking about this. It contains spells to reverse prophecies, good prophecies. It contains spells to block money and inheritance. And it contains spells to block love, true love. So if we've been talking a lot about the unification of twin flames, the rising of Christ consciousness, this is the spell book that blocks that. Now, the Codex Gingus was made of 160 donkey skins. The Necronomicon is made of human skin. Okay. Um, all right. The main god in the Necronomicon is a god named... Ch Chitula, I hope I'm saying that right, Chitula. And Chitula is a, like a fish head goddess of, a god of the sea. Um, I will type it in here and I will show you guys some pictures because um, it doesn't look fictional to me. Maybe 10 years ago, I would have thought it was fictional. But um, now that we know what we know about what we know, is anything really fiction? Huh. So this is Chitula, some of the images of the demonic god of the sea. Is that something like the Kraken and Pirates of the Caribbean or something? I don't know. So now what did uh, Jeffrey's girlfriend, be careful about how I say this, the one that just got arrested and had a trial in New York, last name was Maxwell. She was the citizen of the sea. She was trying to create the sea as its own country. Interesting, right? Mm -hmm. All right. There also in the Necronomicon, there is um, rituals and spells and um, strange sciences, as they call it, obviously. So apparent, according to Lovecraft, this book came to him in a dream. Now, remember I said when he was six, he was having night terrors. So, all right. It can't, contains the information about the dead and the laws that surround the dead. 1927, Lovecraft wrote, did write a piece called The History of the Necronomicon. However, it was released after his, published after his death. He said this was originally titled al Azif, which means the howling of demons. This was written before 738 uh, AD. We don't know if that's the true time or not, but that's written a long time ago. And it's the reference of the title refers to Beelzebub and Psalms 91.5. And I looked it up and that Psalms 91.5 basically talks about the night howls, the night screams. 
Okay. So Al Azif, that was the original title. Now he claimed, Lovecraft claimed that the original Necronomicon was written by a man named Abdul Al Hazred. Now Lovecraft would go on to say that this was a fictional character, but people like us are saying, I don't think so. I think that's what they want us to believe. Okay. Um, at one point, it was believed to be held, one copy was believed to be held at Yale University, where the Voynich manuscript is held, but now people are saying that that was just one big prank. All right, so Al has read, the guy who originally wrote, worshipped Tatula, the, the demon of the sea, okay? He was from Ye Yemen, and he went and studied the secrets of Babylon. I'm sorry, I just jumped, I thought I saw something. <laughs> oh, we're a little jumping this. I mean, I, I get shaky talking about this book, like literally like freaks me out. All right. Nine in, in the year 950, uh, the book was given a new name by the scholar from Greece, which, which this is the Necronomicon that we call it now. So in the year 1050, there was a mass, a massive book burning of the Necronomicon because of all the destruction this book caused. So they tried to get rid of it. Um, but of course they didn't. Why, why would they? The cabal would never give this up. In 1228, it, in 1228, it was translated to Latin. Why would they translate the Necronomicon to Latin, my friends? It's because that is why we, I led with that question. It's because Latin is a demonic language of spell casting. So they were upping the ante, in my opinion. So today, um, there, oh, sorry, let me back up. Now, copies of the Necronomicon started to show up in America in the early 20th century, around the time of um, Lovecraft's birth. He was, he was born in 1890, so early 20th century, early 1900s. So if he was dreaming this while they were starting to appear. So now it is said that there are only five full copies that are available today. People, some people have some, you can go on YouTube and listen to people's testimonies of having copies of the original. Obviously booksellers aren't care, c selling copies of human bound skin. This is the five copies that are human bound skin that are being held in certain institutions. One is held at the British history museum in London. One is at France's national library. One is at Harvard. One is at the university of Buenos Aires. And one is at the Vatican. Cause of course the Vatican has it. Um, but a lot of times, very often, this book is mistitled to keep it hidden in plain sight. And from what I have seen in my uh, research into testimonies, that you don't even have to read this damn book. You got it sitting in your bookshelf. Shit's going to happen in your house. Very scary shit is going to start happening in your house. So a lot of people, if you have a haunted house or you think you're ha go look through, you might have the Necronomicon somewhere and it's just mistitled in order to cause chaos in your house. Um, this also talks about the old ones or the ETs who lived in the cosmos and the earth, which kind of reminds me of the Elohim from the Bible. And they hold dominion over the earth. So anybody, <coughs> excuse me. Anybody who reads the book goes insane, like Lovecraft did, like his parents did. Um, we know that a lot of these dark players, that they don't continually feed the beast that they sold their soul to, they too go insane. Um, the knowledge in the book is beyond human understanding, so it literally can shatter the mind. Is that a portal, you think? I don't know. We can ask the cards. Okay. Cause I, I just, I just had that download just now. I think it's a, yeah. Oh yeah. It certainly is. I get the world, the star and the six of swords, which is a travel card portal or can um, open up a portal. Can I ask, will the cards let us know the five so I guess, will the cards verify that this book really exists? This is a really, is this like the most dangerous book in the world and it doesn't really exist? I mean, intuitively, the way my body's reacting to it, I would say yes. That page of pentacles, I'm getting a yes. It's like, it's a, like a physical thing. Um, 
And yeah, it's not good. I mean, it causes, I guess, seven of wands with the five of wands. It causes confusion. It causes high priestess card. So a, a very high, high ranking um, witch or warlock in the dark arts would be the ones to handle this book. Um, yeah. Um, also, too, off-worlders, um, it definitely was used as a portal. Um, I'm also getting it. It can reverse the prophecies because I got the star, the world, and the six of uh, wands. Um, so it, it's saying that <coughs> it, I'm getting it exists. And it's like it doesn't feel like it exists because that's like putting something to rest, but it certainly does. I mean, they're pretending it doesn't exist. I'm getting it intuitively. I'm, I'm getting it does. Can we, ask, page of pentacles. can we ask the cards, this, the human bound, the five books that are bound in human skin, are these um, humans that were vibrationally of the light? Maybe people, I have some ideas of who they might, harnessing their, their high vibration in this book, these books. Like, I don't think they pick just any Tom, Dick, or Harry off the streets. I think they're specific people. It's people of a vibration that can bring the dark to light. The Eight of Cups right there. Um, and it's uh, in, in bring justice to the world. Now, it's not finished. Okay. All right. So this um, is why... Yeah, they, they discreetly want to uh, take those people, uh, whether it be incarnate or people of high vibrations, they've been planning, they're still working on it, planning. Okay. This pisses me off. So this, I've, I felt the need to put this on my Twitter and now I think I know why. Guru is a Sanskrit word. Guru means bringing dark to light. If somebody's telling you they don't believe in gurus and they're high up in this truth or community, they're fucking with your mind. Guru only means dark to light. It doesn't mean a specific person. So I posted this the other day. Vunde Gurunam Charanada Vinde. I bow down to the lotus feet, lotus light feet of the guru, which has shown us the bliss of our own Atman. Guru means dark to light. Feet also means something. Pay attention. Everything has meaning. You, you have the guru feet of, you have the lotus like feet of the guru. We all do, but you have to be activated in order to bring that dark. So it's a Kundalini activation. When someone tries to bring you away from that word guru, they're trying to stop you from activating. Oh, this is making this pissing me off. So is Mary Magdalene, one of the, one of the skins. And if she is, I'm assuming Yashua is one too. Oh, you know it. Because we got that they were buried, but they were like moved around and messed with. And so that's why I'm wondering. Yeah, I'm feeling the reading. It makes me sick to my stomach, this reading. I mean, this whole thing just makes me sick to my stomach. Yeah, she was. Ace of Cups. Strength card, she was Lyran. And then the Hanged Man. And it's almost like they wanted, if she comes back, they almost want to use it again. Are there people right now in the truth or community that they're trying to target to take the skin? This is so sick. I mean, the, the level of their depravity My heart's beating so fast right now. Yeah. I'll tell, I'll show you the cards in a second. Not in a very organized way, but yeah. 
full card with the tower card because they're trying to usher in another agenda, another plan. And it's the higher font, which is black witchery, along with all those cards. Uh, um, uh, it's next to the Knight of Wands. I mean, and then they're like, they're throwing every freaking arrow they have left. Is this why this, this is telling me that they're like freaking out right now. Is this why they're stealing a lot of our natal charts? Does it have to do with the Necronomicon and this reversal of prophecy? Because I'm not the only person, guy. I'm not the only one whose chart's been stolen. There's a few of us. So I just got hit the hardest. <laughs> what was I asking again? Um, is that why they're, are they, have they, are they messing with certain truthers, natal charts and star charts? Does it have to do with the Necronomicon and reversing prophecies for that are for the light? I get my freaking coven card. Oh, shit. All right. Oh, um, they're so evil. They're so fucking evil. It, it, it's not going to last. I mean, we know this. I know, but it's just um, like, I cannot get over how evil they are. Is this why certain truthers are sell selling natal charts on the black market? Does it have to do with the Necronomicon? Let's go there. Let's do it. Let's go there. Let's take their power away. Tabu Usa Alega, Tabu Usa Alega, Tabu Usa Alega. Let's do it. Is this why there that there's certain people that claim to do astrological charts for people at a cheap price? And we have gotten a lot of lot of intel has been sent to me that they are selling these black these birth charts on the black market for nefarious spell casting. Does it have to do with the Necronomicon? I'm sweating. I'm so fucking pissed right now. I'm coming power. I'm just, I know I'm just, I'm, I'm like, this is like, um, as Magdalene says, the wrathful anger, this is the wisdom of the wrathful anger. Cause I think this is personal and I'm going to ask this question. I'm just going to go for it. Taba usa alega, taba usa alega, taba usa alega. Not necessarily the Nomicron. It's to isolate, isolate, um, unions uh in planning um ahead to a negative future yeah so that's the prophecy that's containing spells to block unions and the necronomicon yeah. but it has to do with that because that's part of the ascension process yeah so um can i ask a personal question huh? is my skin from a past life on one of these books shit now you're really talking I did not expect that question. Lega, 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 You're Lega, protected. Lega. Let's just go there. Uh, let's do it. This is this is Gog and Magog. Let's not pussyfoot around this. Pussyfoot. I mean, I found this bug out of nowhere, so I'm just gonna go for it. Yeah. Is this why God showed me? Had me find it, and why I'm the one having? Yeah, it was. It? Um, also, it looks like it was a twin as well, not just you. And um, it's like they harness that energy for their pleasures and spell castings. Um, there's definitely words that they say over this. Um, and again, just take what resonates and leave what doesn't, guys. These are just the card readings. I'm just getting intuitively what I'm getting. So is that why... I we've been targeted in this life. Are they planning on taking our skin in this life too? To complete the Necronomicon. Yeah. I only pulled three cards. So both of us are being targeted and that's why they I have the three of pentacles, which is my coven card, the star card, which is like my prophecy card and the Knight of wands. So, um, Oh, and I just got the seven of swords. So that's a theft card, a pulling away card. That's sneaky. They're not going to succeed, though. No. Time. No. I mean, the freaking witches and warlocks didn't succeed over and uh, doing what they were doing to Putin. So, I mean, no. <coughs> God's got a different plan. So, um, blame that shit. Was it, um, 
destined for me to find this and be the one to present it. So seeing that my skin and my twin skin from a past life are on these books because of the Lyran vibration. Does that, is that why I found the book and why am I the one that's supposed, is, is this like a plot twist? Am I supposed to be the one to like bring this book out? Does that make sense? Kind of like karmically. Uh -huh. I'm shaking right now. I'm so Part of what brings us into the light. And this causes them burden. And um, yeah, you're presenting information. Queen of Pentacles, which is like, it's like taking back your power. Yeah. And then the moon card. So it's like, it's not expected. They're not expecting it. Wheel of Fortune. It changes your, your situation out. I'm hoping it changes everybody's because the neck, I mean, if, if my skin's on one of those books from a past existence, then okay. But it's also controlling the, the, the world. And okay, so here's a question. Are there truthers that are using this book that people trust that they shouldn't? Not getting into a whole lot of truthers using this book. It could be a couple, a few. Mm -hmm. um, two, and two in particular. I, I get a queen of swords. So yeah, spell casting by words and thought. Um, they're planning their own thing ahead um actually they, they've been kind of dissatisfied with the outcome at this point and things will be brought to justice um <coughs> in fact there could be also military intervention mm -hmm. um but yeah once the earth shifts i mean their powers are not going to yeah it's like they're going to be blindsided. So these are truthers that are heavily spellcasting people. Heavily I, spellcasting I feel like it's, it. I feel like, like I said, it's not a whole lot of them. What I'm getting, it could be just like one or two of them that know the art of black magic. You know who so, I'm talking about. I mean, I know who you're talking about, but I mean, for the rest of them, you know, I wouldn't pin this on a bunch of truthers. I know there's a bunch that, you know, there's a different levels of what we say are bad truthers. Um, and so there's level of being egotistical and that's solely their issue is they're just egotistical. They're in this to gain personal gain of self fame and everything like that. But then you have a high level of bad and that's like, um, you know, in the club kind of bad. Um, so it's, you just have to use your discernment and judge for yourself you know as the viewers what level that could be at and i tried very lightly on saying who is not good and who because i don't want that's not my job um whatever is in the dark will come to light eventually and i trust god to bring anything that's in the dark to light um we're just presenting this because bryce has been through a lot and she came across this and um and we met yeah. a huge meeting yesterday before we even brought it so basically we're led by God to bring us up in other words. Um, so basically the people who've targeted me though, are using the Necronomicon likely yeah. because they know who I am. They know who I was and they know who my twin is too. Well, I think it's not even, I think it's a, a group of <coughs> those who stand in the light who have, you know, twins and high purposes and, you know, come from a Royal blood lineage. That's what I'm getting that there are several different people that make up the skins of this book. It's just, it's just disgusting, isn't it? I'm urging you guys. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to ever censor anything because I, I don't believe in censorship, but please 
if you want to listen or read the Necronomicon, I would just beg you to go listen to people's testimonies before you do that. Um, because this book is fucking evil. It's I've never seen. I mean, I've heard of evil books before, but I've never seen the response to this as I have. And the media, I mean, Stephanie, literally, I called you right after I found it. I was shaking, wasn't I? I hadn't even done any research into it, really. Yeah, I think just, I mean, the name alone gives me the heebie-jeebies because necro means death. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that from working in the medical field, you get necrosis or anything. It's like dead tissue, you know, dead skin, dead this, dead that, you know, um, necrotizing fasciitis, skin, flesh eating disease. You know what I mean? Like, so, I mean, just that word necro is kind of like a yuck in my book. And then the whole nomicron, it's almost like I got to bathe myself when I even say it. <coughs> Not like Omnicron, like anyway. Um, so oh, I didn't even think of that. Well, I'll just leave that there because I don't want them to. Um, I just got hit with something. So, the five books that are made up of different skins of humans from past existences is that why we had to come back this life? Like, we had to. I don't think there's more to it than that, but, okay, I but is that one of the reasons why, like. He, they used you in that life. You you have no choice. You got to return to get back to Earth for this life round trip. Ugh. Like that just hit me. Like, is that one of the reasons why? You know, I mean, we know Magdalene is not here on this Earth plane yet. We know Yahshua is not here on this Earth plane yet. And those who say that they are need to check in with themselves because I'm so sick and tired of hearing that this person is that person. Stop labeling people. And Magdalene oh is not God. coming back as a man and Yashua is not coming back as a woman. That's inverting the divine masculine and feminine. Well, that not is only that, favorite. no past president is Yashua. I'm no, sorry. I'm putting no. it out there. I'm so sick of hearing that. Yeah. Crazy nonsense. I, I know. I, I mean, and I'm going to say this because I'm proud of my work on the Jesus strand, but my work on the Jesus strand was the missing books of the Bible and Constantine and Mithraism. That's why I was brought. I, the other work is not mine. Um, no, I do not believe that Kennedy is, is the return of, of the second coming, no. the seventh coming as we that know. needs to so, stop. Needs and that's stop. also idolizing people that stop, that stop idolizing. Just yeah. stop. And stop saying that truthers are people they're not. Every day I, no. I see, every day I see more shit about that. No, I, we, Stephanie, I know these people. We're just people. Why do we have to be celebrities? That's I'm just Stephanie Bryce's Bryce. Bryce. I was born in 1983 in South Carolina. I'm not Princess Diana. Yes, I am related to the royal family. I've talked about that a lot, but I am me. My mother is Alice Bryce Bradley. My father is Lee Watson. My, I was born, that's who I am. I'm not, I'm not a celebrity. There's no freaking mask on me. I mean, Stephanie's seen me all the time. Do you have a mask on? No. I'm sick no. of this shit. No one has to be a celebrity. That's and even with the celebrities that are alive, that, that's happy and everything that they decided to leave that lifestyle behind and, and fake their, you know, their fake death and everything and to, to be here for this period of time and help and everything. And I definitely have um, utmost respect for their bravery. I just want to make that quite clear. But we should still not be saying, oh, my God, I saw mj at the rally and i saw tupac at the rally and all this other nonsense that, that goes into idolizing you should not be no. i mean it's exciting yeah. it's exciting because we'll probably be able to get some new music from them going forward like personally you know i really i believe freddie mercury yeah, is alive i, I and i love freddie because he's so talented like I, I look at it as like a talent thing and when i sing anything i love to sing queen and just because I love his range for a male, his ranges kick ass. Now, I don't know him in person. I would imagine he's probably a nice person, but I don't know him in person. I'm not going to sit there and idolize the man because he's a singer and he's known to the world. No. I mean, our YouTube channels are getting, you know, more views and everything. And so what happens is people tend to look at us now as kind of like that image. And I don't tolerate it at all. I put people right in their place because you don't know me personally. I'm not perfect. I'm not God. I'm not even close to being God. And therefore, I do not want to have the ground kissed 
where I stand because I'm just a human being. So it's so important to check in with yourself and make sure you're not idolizing anybody because that is disgusting. And I'm so tired and sick of hearing it. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you think that you can just sit around and eat popcorn and wait for these celebrities to do shit to change the world, you need to wake the fuck up. Because we're not going to ascend if you sit around and keep living in this deranged fantasy world. You need to work on yourself. We are all equal. All of us. We're moving into a new timeline where there are no fucking idols. You, you are the lotus feet of the guru. You are responsible for turning your Atman into, from darkness to light. Not the Kennedys, not the Trumps, not any of these people that you think are playing truthers. No, we're just people like you. You need to do your own work. Stop relying on other people to do it for you. That's probably why we haven't ascended yet. You guys got to pull your head out of your ass. Stop thinking that these celebrities are wearing masks all the time. Some are. Yes, we know there are some, but not all. But don't just assume it until we know for a fact. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and if that's the case, who the frick cares? Yeah. And you know, I saw someone saying today that John Ritter is playing DeSantis and that pissed me the fuck off because I, he was one of my teachers. And as I, as I said to David Dubliga on Dark Outpost Day, he was loved in my school. The person you see on camera right now as the governor of Florida was the exact same person that taught at my high school. There's, there, there was no changeover in personality. And until you know for sure, stop it. Because that is evil. That is evil to say that somebody is not who they are and there's someone else instead. And you don't know that for sure. Stop it. Have more respect I for people than that. Anyway, sorry, I'm fired up. This whole neck. Yeah, this whole that, well, that whole subject fires me up because honestly, I mean. Supposedly, people were supposed to come out already. That didn't happen. So empty promises, you know, and to not believe in careful. Yourself. Yeah. Stop believing it. If, if, use your own discernment. If you're just following along with what somebody's telling you, you're using their cult. discernment, not yours. It's a cult. It's a cult. Don't hero worship truthers. Don't hero worship tarot card readers. Don't hero worship dowsers, Ichin ringers, whatever. Use your discernment. You can watch them, respect them for their work, but use your own fucking discernment. Sorry, it makes me really mad because I know some of these people are using the Necronomicon and they're tricking people. They're tricking people with their, what does David call it? Hoopity jubity. Hoopa jubu. The hoopa jubu. They're, they're using it. And it makes me mad because my life has been put on the line many times now. And I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm trying to laugh about it, but it's been serious. And I know that the other person that's being right now is really, really in trouble. And he needs to wake the fuck up and get himself out of trouble because there's a couple. Yeah. Cause this is serious. Look yeah. There's some really good people that have been tricked. Um, really, really good, rep good, reputable people who have been completely tricked and it is, and you can see the, the personality change. And these are people that I don't know in person, um, but I've recognized it. And, um, and then it takes away their credibility and their reputation. And for what? You know, because somebody is saying that these people are these are like the Christ or whoever, like, no. And, you know, Christ can't come back just yet. But we won't go into that just yet. That's for another day. So. Can't get back yet, guys, till we get our shit together. Yeah. Um, as far as your question goes, Bryce, um, I do get an ace. <coughs> um, and yeah, I what the question was again, because I went off on the tangent there. Um, I asked um, if that those of us whose skin has been used in these five books, which I don't even know how many of, there, that, of, that, of us there are. Did we have to come back? Was that part of the reason why we had to come back was because. Oh, yeah. It is actually prophecy. It's like we had to surrender to it. <laughs> Fuck. This is why I was like, all yeah. set. This is why I don't want to come um, back. It's prophecy. Now. Prophecy against the devil. Um, and then I get the ace of swords. I keep getting the ace of swords, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. So it's almost like it's it's getting your power back. It's getting your, your essence back, your 
this is why I didn't want to come back. That memory I had of coming, I really don't want to come back. And this is why, because I knew they had used my skin one time. And I was like, I don't want to go, I don't want to even tempt fate again, but we had to come back. Okay, can the cards give us any indication of how many people are used? Do you think, is there any way they can give us numbers? I don't think, I don't know. I need my dousing board on that one. Okay, let's just, I just want to ask, because if, 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 um, I know God is listening, but if like the military is listening, we could really use a vacation when this is all over. <laughs> I think we deserve a vacation. <laughs> palm trees. Bring me to the palm trees. I just want a fucking beer at this point. Like, just, just give me a beer. Give me a beer. Give me a palm tree and give me a beach and we're talking. <laughs> What's that song? <laughs> Son of a bitch. Give me a drink. <laughs> oh, man. God is good. Pe uh, beer is great and people are crazy. <laughs> Can you imagine? Like, I was just, I mean, going through life. I mean, I had spiritual attacks my whole life, but now I'm like, shit. Even if I went to therapy again, what am I going to say? I just found out my skin from a past life is used. To yeah, it would sound quite kind of crazy to them. How many people have been on the Necronomicon skin? How many people's skins? Four. Yeah. I'm not going any further than that. I don't know if it's, is it 44 or four? Is it four? Getting four. So who would the fifth book be? The one they're still Wait. probably creating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay, then. Listen, I know my skin's nice and tan now, but... <laughs> Mine is not quite there. I was in Florida recently. Well, I wish it a lot, but it's mine. I do get nice and tan, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a little pasty ghost right now. I get tan real fast, like real fast. Oh, I tan really, really fast too. I, you know, I got Sicilian skin, but I've been cooped up for the past six months because of, well, living where I live. And so um, when the well, the sun started to come out. I got a little bit of color the other day, but it, it kind of went away. But it was very, very vague um, amount of color. So when I, when I eventually do get out and go to the beach and everything like that, I will be uh, a very nice golden brown. Yeah, that's how I am. I get, I get. I don't know if you can still. I still have bathing suit lines. Yeah, a little bit tan lines. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it doesn't take me that long to get sun in Atlanta. Sometimes it does because we got a lot of trees around, but. Up in Florida like that, I'll be outside for five minutes and all of a sudden I've literally changed races. So <laughs> but my hair gets blonder in the sun. So, but when I was a kid, I, all the blondes out there know when you're a kid and the chlorine, it would turn like green. Oh yeah. I remember that. Yeah. They have a shampoo for that. Yeah, or something. Yeah. When I was a kid, I didn't care. You have to get a, but then I have a toner that sometimes turns a little purpley, but yeah, it just gets a little bit lighter now, but you know. It's a tough, it's a tough life living in Florida. <laughs> oh yes. Tough. Totally tough. It's awful. It's terrible. I'm so ready to not be in Atlanta. I'm so ready not to be in Babylon. <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to ask the cards about the Necronomicon? Are we going to get to burn that sucker? No, I want my skin back. <laughs> um, let's ask if it's going to be destroyed. How about that? <laughs> like wore the rings with the ring, like throwing the ring into the fire. <laughs> Maybe that was a symbol because uh, who wrote that book? Not C.S. Lewis. That was uh, was it C.S. Lewis? No, Tolkien. J.R. Tolkien. Hold on, I'm gonna. Him and C.S. Lewis were both Freemasons. Oh, for sure. But, it, but they're Christian books. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wink, wink. All right, All right. guys. Y'all want so while she's pulling the cards. Speaking of Atlanta. If y'all want to follow a really funny, if you're from the South and you don't have to, but if you want to follow a really funny page, there's this Atlanta page called ATL Uncensored. And it's really funny. Like they have some, okay, this one's funny. The show, I shared this on my Twitter page of a guy and a girl in one of those uh, wheelchairs that moves out where they got a hoe around or whatever. And <laughs> anyway, it's a really funny page. If, if you're from the Southeast or from Atlanta, this is one of my favorite pages. <laughs> it's, it's, it's sad though. They show a lot of the, craziness happening because of uh, certain progressive laws that have been passed in the city the cards are not giving me a decisive answer um i will say this though i feel like
there's a there's a there's an add on question I want to do to this because um, I feel like it's either going to be or already was put into a portal along with some black hat players. <gasps> That's good news. So my question is, I need to ask now is um, if it already was put in there. Maybe a few of them, but maybe not all of them. All right. We'll just ask for some of the Necronomicon books. I know the truth of the people who are using this is still out there. So I would imagine if that person had been apprehended, they would have taken. I don't know, though. The Necronomicon. I'm asking if it was removed off the planet, if any of them were. I was thinking when you said it wasn't giving us a specific answer, I was wondering if maybe that was because we would get to just those of us that were used to make the book, would get to like decide what to do with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I don't know. I laugh about wanting to like, that's my skin, but I don't know if I actually would want to see it. I wouldn't. I just be like, you know what? That's a past life. I'm, I'm now, I'm now bright. I'm not in this life now and I've got my skin. Thank you very much. Yes, um, there are some still on the earth. I do got a four of pentacles still. <coughs> they are planning on removing them. I got justice and the fool and then the two of wands. So they are planning on it. Um, and there is a good group of people that are working together to remove them. I got the magician card. My magician card is oftentimes a portal card when I do readings. So um, I feel like at least one of them was removed. I guess all in time. This just fucking pisses me off. Like, I cannot believe, I mean, honestly, guys, like, how evil are these people? It's, it's evil beyond the depths of, of human understanding. I know we've talked about this, uh, Stephanie. I think the church did a huge disservice when it talked about spiritual, obviously, it did a disservice for a reason, because people just think you could just skip through and just say, oh, in the name of Jesus, I, you know, and that doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Because these, this, this power, this group of black witches, and they're powerful. They're very, that's why there's a battle. That's why there's been a battle going on. If it was that easy, none of this shit would be happening right now. They are powerful. This is a war that we're in. So please, please take it seriously. Please know that this is not a movie. You want to help humanity? Work on yourself. Raise that guru inside of you, that light to darkness. Heal your karma. You know what I'm saying? Don't put your karma on somebody else. No, don't. That means Jesus. All right, guys. So I know we're releasing this at two o'clock in the morning on Thursday. Um, we'll be back on the dark outpost later today. We picked two o'clock in the morning for astrological purposes. Um, and then we'll be back on dark outpost a little bit later today to present this on David Zublik's platform. And I'll be back on Aquarius rising Africa on Monday to once again, present this as well. Um, ignorance is bliss, but knowledge is power. So please share the word and uh, get this out there. And we will, um, together we we're all just walking each other home. We got this. All right, guys, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye.